Hey. Hey. Um, it's weird being here <laughs> to record an episode. It is. Yeah, it's it's um I guess we started already in remotely, you know. So yeah. This is a, definitely a change. Definitely I have to change look at base. you and pay attention. Yeah, I'll know if you're slapping off now in <laughs> class. Just be on Twitter. Yeah. I'll have to take my phone away. Terrible student. Yeah. I'll find out if you indeed have always been a terrible student <laughs> or if you're, you know. On good behavior now. Yeah, if you're acting right now that you're front, you're front and center too. You're I like am. a front row kid. Oh no, I hate front rowers. <laughs> So what? you're a back row in classes? I am, yeah, traditionally back or back middle. Um, actually, actually pretty pretty far back, yeah, especially in college. So in college, um, we had, you know, basics we had to take for our art degree or whatever. Yeah, like core curriculum? Or, mm -hmm. Okay. So core curriculum and then the art department had a core curriculum. Had foundations include, of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and some of those were art history ones. And so all the uh, communication design majors, which is what I was, would sit in the very back and just be like, why are we here? I'm tired. And just, just be bad, basically. Wow. Punks. It's fun. Yeah. I'm always a very back row yeah. person. I don't like people to be behind me. It's weird. And like looking. I feel they're not looking at me. It's they're spotlight not. effect. But like, I don't. I just have the feeling of like, if I goof off, they'll see me. What if you need to pick a wedgie? Or if I need to pick a wedgie, yeah. <laughs> More important. That. Or if someone is texting you something inappropriate, you don't want them to be like, hmm. True. Yeah. I don't want them to see uh, lewd images on my phone. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm constantly <laughs> sexting. I'm sorry. No. It's just something I think about. I just don't want people looking at my phone. That's fair. That's fair. Privacy is important. You hear that NSA? Privacy is important. Yeah, guys. I know you're all guys, too. Uh, yeah. Probably. Probably. I don't know the stats on that. All right, enough pre-classroom banter. <laughs> what do you want to learn about today? Um, today, I want to learn about um, what is a right to work state. What is a right to work state? Okay, you want to? We we can start it with just like. Yeah. What is that? Just the definition, <laughs> and then work from there. Yeah. Uh, do you have any context like? Uh, what I know about it already. What do you know about it already, and like, why do you want? What has sparked your curiosity in okay. right to work states? So this is an embarrassing story already. All right. First off, so here's what I know. It's not much, which is Texas is one. So I think I, I had confused. I had the term right to work confused with at will employment. Ooh, so okay. Yeah. If we could get some differences between those, that would be helpful. Because the reason I started thinking about this was because of the Supreme Court decision about um, anti-discrimination for transgender and gay folks. So I was like, what about right to work states? And I realized, oh, that's not the same thing, according, apparently, yeah. according to Google. That's, you're right. Um, so right to work has to do with unionization. Mm -hmm. And we'll get more into that, of course, here in a bit. And what, you're talk what you were talking about with the Supreme Court case, what was that called again? It was called Bostock versus Clayton County, Georgia, and Altitude Express Inc. versus Zarda. I'm just reading about them. One of them is, um, so Bostock got fired from like a government program after he joined a gay softball league. The and fuck? then, yeah, right? This, this second one is blowing my mind. Zarda, uh, Donald Zarda was a skydiving instructor and his dismissal followed a complaint from a female customer who had expressed concerns about being strapped to him during a tandem drive. And he, um, in an attempt to reassure her, told her he was, quote, 100% gay. <sighs> So there's a lot wrong with that. Like one, like the fucking like narcissism of this woman. Like, oh, like you're definitely going to have a boner. Yeah, I don't want to be strapped to a man. <laughs> yeah. And then two, like he told you he was gay and you're still upset. Like what, what do you want like, him to be? Like, what the hell are you gay? Yeah. Do what? you just like want to like cut off his dick or what's the goal here? <laughs> I don't know. That and was so weird. We don't know the details on that. Like what if, you know, I don't know how that gets back to the employer because the employer is ultimately the one who's like, yeah, that's well, true. you fired. So, but that's a different thing. That's a different thing. When they're talking about that, they're talking about the civil rights act, mm -hmm. uh, a law that says that employers can't discriminate on the basis of race, sex, mm -hmm. nation of origin, you know, things like that. Um, meaning is it a protected class? If there, there are certain things that are protected where employers are not allowed to fire people for those reasons. Yeah. When talking about right to work, it's a different thing. Okay. 
So that's what we'll get into. <laughs> so we need to start at square one. <laughs> yeah, square one, it doesn't mean that. Okay, great. Square two, uh, here's what it does mean. So right to work, um, the term uh, itself was actually coined locally here in Dallas. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, the term right to work was coined by one William Ruggles. Ruggles, yeah, yeah. he's a clown. <laughs> Ruggles the <a> clown. <laughs> um, in an editorial article for the Dallas Morning News. Oh, good. September 1st, 1941, Labor Day. He pens <laughs> This is the day he chooses to do that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. For that reason, I think. Uh, he writes an article calling for a constitutional amendment guaranteeing the right to work with or without union membership. Okay. Was that a thing that was a problem? It wasn't a problem, but it was there. It was a law. Yeah. So what this means, uh, if you're in a right to work state, mm -hmm. a right to work state has outlawed uh, what are called union shops and agency shops. Okay. Okay. What are those? Yeah. Right. That was my, that was my next question. <laughs> Uh, it all has to do with a law passed in 1935, the National Labor Relations Act, also called the Wagner Act. Okay. A lot shorter, easier to remember, right? Um, which set up four different types of labor agreements between labor unions and employers. Okay. So when a labor union and employer figure out, okay, this is our contract. Mm -hmm. uh, here's how we're going to deal with new employees and how... New employees either have to be or don't have to be in the union. Okay. All right. An agreement, um, also called a union security clause. And there are four types. Okay. The first is a closed shop. Okay. All right. If your workplace is a closed shop, employees have to be a member of the union as a condition of employment. Oh. So if you work there, you have to be in the union. Day one, you're a union member, you pay dues. Yeah, I was going to ask. Et cetera. Yeah, you know, like, you have to pay dues when they Do you have to, like, due. go to stuff? You don't have to go to meetings okay. or anything. You're not required <laughs> to. You just, you can, because you're a member, uh -huh. you know, but it's not mandatory. You okay. do have to pay union dues in a closed are shop. Are like, a lot, usually? Uh, they are, in from my understanding of it, they're substantial. Oh. Um, I think it was Delta Airlines or somebody that was running that ad campaign that was like, you could buy a PS4 with your <laughs> your yearly membership dues or something. Trying cool. to convince people not to do it, you know. That's great. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about the value of it a little later. Uh, that's one. Mm -hmm. And it, let's say you're like, fuck that, I'm not going to pay my union dues. If they kick you out of the union, you'll lose your job in a closed shop. The second category. Okay, so that was closed. This closed shop, have to be in the union, yeah. required. Uh, the second category is a union shop. Okay. All right. In a union shop, employees, you know, you can be hired on, not in the union, but there's a window of time when you have to join the union, you know, 30 days, 60 days or something. And if you don't you know. do that, you're fired? If you don't do that, yeah, then then you're, you're fired. Then there's an agency shop, in which case uh, employees don't have to join the union, but if they're covered under the collective bargaining agreement, and the, the, the contract, if they're covered under that contract, they have to pay a certain amount of money equivalent to the union rep. Basically, they okay. have to pay the union dues, but they don't really have early. to be in the union. That's kind of dumb. Yeah. I don't get the point of that one. Um, it's just a way to make sure that the union can cover its cost of make of getting a contract for that employee, even though that employee is, you know, ungrateful enough not to join the union. Okay. That seems... I mean, why wouldn't you at that point? Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe the fee is cheaper. Like, okay. it's not... You don't pay... You're not allowed in the meetings or anything, so mm -hmm. maybe you don't pay for that, but like... Maybe. You know, you cover just the costs of covering you. I don't know. Weird. There may be some okay. reason for that. And then the last category is an open shop. Okay. An open shop is where employees uh, cannot be compelled to join the union at all or to pay dues to the union at all. It's optional. Okay. Completely. There are four categories. Uh, and one of those has already been outlawed nationwide. Whether you're in a union state or a right to work state, the closed shop is no longer a thing. Okay. That was outlawed in 1947. A law okay. called the Taft-Hartley Act. Taft. All right. Uh, it was like also called the... Taft? It wasn't the President Taft. Okay. It was... Uh, different Taft. Yeah, different Taft. I guess he probably wasn't alive. <laughs> From I don't know. Ohio. Robert Taft, I believe his name was. He was like a very conservative senator from Ohio. Okay. Uh, kind of a loser. And... Uh, the Labor Management Relations Act is what it's also called. And it outlawed the closed shop completely. Okay. No more closed shops. So there's no state where 
you can get fired for not being in the union. Like, you know, you have to do it day one. Like, that that's not a thing. Okay. It left the other three things open. The window one and the, the totally the, open. Yeah. And the agency one, which was just a weird. Oh, yeah, yeah, one. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It left that available, but it gave states the right to outlaw union shops and agency shops. That's not great. Right. So it meant that (laughs) states could decide that we are only going to be open shops, meaning only Only. unions are completely optional. Unions don't have the power to, you know, make people pay union dues if they're getting the benefits of a union. Okay. Okay. If your state passes laws like that, then they are a right to work state. Okay. If your state only has open shop, then they're a right to work state. Okay. Right. Do you? Am I? Do I understand? Uh, do you understand? But do you see why that might matter, or is it still pretty murky as to like, well, who cares if you have to be in the union or not? Um, I mean, it, gosh, let's backtrack a little bit. Yeah. We've talked about unions before, but I just want like a super boilerplate definition of like, hey, what is a union? What do they do? Sure. How does that work? Because like mm-hmm. my understanding is that like, I mean, it's a group of workers. I guess where where I get confused is like how does that group of workers interact with corporations plural singular like I don't know okay basically uh, so help me the union you're right it's a group of workers uh-huh. advocating for you know the rights the uh, of the workers there in terms of their workplace conditions their wages benefits they try to advocate for the workers that work in a place is there such a thing as like a just one company union or do they always have to be multi business unions there's such a thing as a company union typically that has a different connotation that okay. means like it's bad it, <laughs> that means it's bad yeah the company is trying to claim that oh hey you know, still this have group one. this group will look after you but it's if it's run by the company it's not really okay. looking after your interests but well i don't know how prevalent like a, a union that would just be in one company would be in. Mm-hmm. most unions are like a local branch of a larger national union okay they are an outside group like they're made up of the workers there they mm-hmm. represent the workers there all right but they uh, are not part of the company or the corporation at all and the workers there, you know, they are able to exert demands, you know, on and and force the employer to do more. Okay. Because they they have like control over the whole whether everybody or nobody works there, so they have they have control of that basically. Yeah. Um, they so have guess... more power than just like maybe a few people coming to the boss and saying, "Oh, we don't like whatever." The boss can easily, pretty easily say, "Well, I don't like you. You're fired." <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, versus his whole entire workforce saying, hey, we're not working if you don't do this. Yeah. I think what confuses me is is just the interplay between different... I'm going to use factories as an example because it's like a very well-known example of union stuff. Okay. Um, so like the interplay between like, all right, I work at factory A and I am in a union that affects factories A, B, and C right it can yeah okay. if they're organized under the same national like okay one big group is the afl cio mm-hmm. formed from the merger of the american federation of labor and the congress of industrial organizations okay two old big unions combined into one big union uh that group you know represent they have a lot of local chapters all across mm-hmm. the country so you might work in one plant and have your you know local chapter or whatever and you're in this technically in the same union mm-hmm. as people all over the country. Yeah, that's okay. that's for sure a possibility. Uh, but your union is there to negotiate the contract, you know. Yeah, that's with what I was going to ask. Company. So it's not like me. Okay, would I personally? It's just like I'm just a, a person who works at the factory. Would I be helping to negotiate that contract, or is there like a higher up guy in the union that's like their job? They're like kind of adminish. I guess it does depend on the structure of the union. Yeah, um, I imagine if it's a big enough one, they have to have kind of a bigger structure. Yeah, a lar- larger unions have a hierarchy for sure. 
and even smaller ones, have some sort of a hierarchy. Uh, you can be in union leadership. You can be kind of a local representative to, you know, but yeah, there's, there are people whose job it is to do the negotiate. The union yeah. has lawyers, the union has resources. And one of the big reasons people want to join unions is for, to get those resources yeah. on their side. Like just even having lawyers is huge. Yeah. Cause otherwise it's just you being like, well, I'm, I'm trying to file a, you know, even like a harassment claim or something mm -hmm. and like, can you afford a lawyer? Probably not. Right. It's things are so one sided now that the old idea of it just being like you and everyone who is in your building or in, in your particular location banding mm -hmm. together and saying, we're not taking this anymore. The boss could probably still even crush that <laughs> by just yeah, saying, yeah. well, you're all fired. If you want to try to fight it in the courts, I'll see you there, but good luck. Yeah. And it wouldn't work. You know, that's why that's one yeah, of the it big things. It has to be kind of big. Yeah, you okay. have to have like you even how would fifty people you know pool enough resources yeah. to go toe to toe with 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 someone who's that fucking rich? Yeah, yeah. that's so just not gonna work. You need that outside. Those, okay, those union. Resources but it is possible it. to just be like a union member who doesn't necessarily participate that much. You just pay your oh, dues and mm -hmm. receive the benefits. Yes. Okay, and that's what the majority of union members. Okay, I mean, it's just we did not grow up with a union culture. I mean, I think because we live in Texas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't, I don't know anyone who's in a union. So let's talk a little bit about the Taft-Hartley Act um, and the right to work states. So we said a right to yeah. work state cannot require, you know, if you work somewhere, you can't be required to pay union dues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and the Taft-Hartley Act is what made that possible. It also did a, a series of things that were not very good. Um, it outlawed wildcat strikes, which we talked about oh, yeah. in the previous episode. Um, it outlawed other types of strikes, sympathy strikes. This would be like if your mm, boss yeah. or not your boss, but like if your company w had a purchasing agreement, maybe with some other company that was an asshole mm -hmm. and you could be like, stop doing business yeah. with this company. They, you know, they're racist. And yeah. You can't do that. That's illegal. So is it still illegal? Uh huh? Yeah. That's and illegal. wildcat strikes are still illegal. Well, go, yeah. Wildcat strikes are, are still illegal. How can, okay. That's confusing to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just don't get how that can be illegal. Like it's just—it seems like a free speech thing, right? Um, the capitalist argument is that it <laughs> is that it interrupts the free flow of commerce, and it's an unlawful combination of people who are trying to hold up, you know, the business of America is business. I'm making a jerk off motion with my hand. Yeah, they suck. Um, <laughs> the I, while it is illegal, a, the, a popular labor saying is the only illegal strike is a broken strike. Mm. If you strike successfully, you make it yeah. legal by action, de yeah. facto. So, um, but it does that. It that's, makes it harder, basically, to shitty. carry those out. Um, and since this was smack dab in the middle of the Cold War, uh, the law required union officers to sign non-communist <laughs> affidavits. Cute. So you had to sign an affidavit with the government and say, I'm not a communist. Just put a little wink at the end of it, though. Yeah, that's well, what I would do. that's no longer in there. They got rid of that in 1965. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Uh, How nice. But it was the Red Scare. And also, socialists and communists, since they're cool, played a big <laughs> role uh, in, and were prevalent among unions leadership at the time. Like, yeah. They were, they were dope. They Everyone were dope. thought they were cool. That's why the losers in Congress said... <laughs> No, this no is not else. a biased report at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, um, you know, you get the the bias other side of the story most of the time. As yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, interesting. Some interesting facts about this law. Um, you know, we've already characterized it pretty clearly. Super <laughs> anti union, anti labor, anti worker. Right. Um, unions called this the slave labor bill. Okay. Uh, President Truman, to his credit, vetoed it. Wow. Thanks, Truman. And Congress overrode his veto. Congress. Uh, considerable. Uh, the, the override of his veto got considerable Democratic support. Cool. 106 out of 177 Democrats in the Jesus. South. And 20 of 42 Democrats in the Senate uh, voted for the slave labor bill. You know, Taft cool. Harley. Cool. So don't trust liberals is what we're saying. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, so again, if you're in a right to work state, mm -hmm. what this means is that when they draw up a contract, when unions in your state draw mm -hmm. up a contract between the workers there and, and the employer, it can't require, uh, workers who receive the benefits of that agreement 
to pay their fair share of the costs of representing them. That sucks. What it means is that people can, if they want to, not pay anything, not be in the union. Nevertheless, if the boss fires them unfairly, they can ask the union to go represent them on their behalf. So what that basically does is weaken unions because they can't, like, raise funds. Yes. So, Mm -hmm. oh, that sucks. Yeah. I totally get, though, how they could sell this as, like, well, you don't want someone to make you do something, which I feel like is how how it has been sold. The little I know about it is, like, everyone yelling at you not to join a union. Even the term right to work is couching it in a freedom thing, right? Yeah, it sounds like... I mean, it's not the same thing as, like, the right to have... I mean, I don't think that's accurate, because, like, it's not like you get a job when you turn 18. (laughs) That's not what happens. No, it makes it sound sort of like that, or like, oh, everyone has the freedom to... But that's not what they mean at all. They mean that you have the right to work without protections, basically. You know, (laughs) another way to think of it. Uh, But yeah, you're right. It undermines unions by undermining their funding, their power. You know, their ability to gather the resources that they need uh, to look out for the, uh, to the benefits, uh, look out for the benefits of their workers. And And, if you've, sorry, if you've outlawed wildcat strikes, then, and you're kind of undercutting their, I mean, pool of people, then it's harder for them to pull off a successful strike because they have less union members, right? Less union members, less money, which is crucial. Mm, Yeah. Um, For like strike funds. Yes. For strike funds, uh, workers need to be paid. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, a portion, usually strike pay is not as much as uh, as your actual wages, but it's something to like buy groceries with and exist. But you still need like all your other bills. (laughs) Yeah. Because this is America and it sucks. Yeah. so yeah, they need that money. And this is not to say that every union throughout all of our history has has been clean of corruption or done as much as it can to yeah, to look out for the interests of its workers. Like especially bi- more business-oriented unions like uh bigger unions that have more of a hierarchy. Mm-hmm. This, um, can, they can they can corruption can set in. Yeah. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that there. Yeah, I mean, this is probably a big philosophical question, but I, I, I wonder how you would balance having a big enough union to make a difference <laughs> and be able to like hold people, hold corporations accountable, while not getting into any corruption and making sure everyone's like on the up and up. You yeah, know? That's I think probably difficult. <laughs> I think it's about democracy. Um, yeah, it's about making sure that work like. It doesn't have to be like horizontal in terms of like there power were votes on this, yeah, yeah. But workers need to say, you know, workers mm-hmm. need to be able to challenge leadership uh, to do things for themselves and stuff. Yeah. Um, so maybe not horizontal, but like slightly more horizontal. More horizontal, yeah. More yeah. democratic say. I would also argue that even in a corrupt union, unless the corruption is extreme and wild, you know, wildly out of proportion. You're probably, as a worker, still going to get more, like, you're, it's going to be better in your favor being in a corrupt union yeah. than the amount you would be ripped off by your boss not in a corrupt union. Yeah. <laughs> you know, who, who are the biggest thieves of all? It's <laughs> yeah, bosses, that's, that's so. true. Um, I'm also, sorry, I was, like, spacing out because I was thinking, like, man, maybe we should have just done a straight up, like, <laughs> what's a union episode? <laughs> no, this is, this is a good launching off point, I think. So, yeah, I guess oh. I, I just have a lot of questions about, like, or not questions, more like I'm starting to put together how unions have always been framed to me versus like what unions can actually do for you. And like, it is it is just an interesting so, <laughs> slash problematic dichotomy. Elaborate on that a little bit. Like what are some of the tropes or some of yeah. the like things you, when you think of a union, the way you've been presented unions. Like. Yeah. Um, so, so my experience with unions, like I said, is very limited. We don't really know that many people in our area that are in unions. I mean, we didn't live in a very industrial town or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but what I do remember is when I worked retail, we had to watch a video about why you should not join, join a union. Mm-hmm. And it was very much just like, they just want to take your money and they're not actually going to help you. Like you should trust us kind of thing. Okay. I think that was the main thing. And then I would also say culturally, what I've heard about unions is that, yeah, they're very corrupt and they're very violent too. Um, like lots of, I feel like there's been, lo- not been lots of coverage, but there's 
there's kind of a narrative that like, oh, look how bad those strikes got. Like, isn't that, isn't that oh, bad? Oh, unruly. Okay. Yes. I was thinking along the, the other trope of them being mobbed up. Mobbed up too, for yeah. sure. I know a lot of, I don't know a lot of, but I've heard a lot of like mob theories and, and stories and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, definitely. Um, I, from, from more business minded types, that's what they point to is like, no, these are just like assholes. Like they're just gangsters. They're, they're just the whatever. Mob. Yeah. 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 Um, and they're, that is not to say that hasn't happened for sure. Like, yeah. There's, that's has, a thing. You know, that was a big, it was a big <laughs> deal, especially back in the day. Yeah. Not so, you know, it probably does still exist I'm in sure. some. I know the mob exists because I watched that documentary, McMillions. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it does exist, but like, I don't know how into labor unions. Yeah. Are I don't anymore, know either. But, um, but yeah, you're you're definitely right. Those on, are the on, the tropes, I guess. Those are yeah. The propaganda. The, it is definitely propaganda <laughs> because you don't get any of the other side of that. Like I said, even if you're in a corrupt union, unless it's ridiculous, you're probably better off than you would be without one. Yeah. Um, but most unions aren't that way. You know, yeah. Most unions aren't uh, super corrupt. Most when they say, like that training says, oh, you know, they'll take your money and they're not going to help you. Mm -hmm. You know. Ideally, you don't need their help because you're not getting unfairly fired because the boss is too scared <laughs> That's to true. fire you because you have a union. So, yeah, you're probably not going to get their help, but you want their – it's like insurance. You want the help there mm -hmm. whenever, you know, problem strikes. But yeah. uh, you don't want to have to be using exactly. your union Exactly. Like time. that's – it's like someone saying not to trust a doctor because they're not going to help you when I beat you up. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like wait wait a minute Why? what if you just didn't beat me up <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure all right i'm gonna give you some counter propaganda give me some counter. all right uh, why should i like unions here's so this is why you should like unions and why you shouldn't like why, shouldn't why you should like corporations why you shouldn't trust corp yeah why you shouldn't trust already corporations. done <laughs> um and the differences between right to work states and uh, states where you know unions don't have that constraint. Okay. All right, right to work states and the rest. Yeah, workers in right to work states make on average six thousand dollars less annually. Damn, twelve percent. Uh, if you look at the medium income, uh, it's eight thousand dollars annually less. I have a tangential question. Yeah, this might be totally inaccurate. Mm -hmm. I feel like the messaging or like the connotation of unions is very much like industrial. Is that still true? It makes it sound like you're work, hard like hat I'm working in a factory. In factory, right? I think that con that's the image most people contact. Yeah, I know there's a uh, service industry one mm -hmm. um, and like a culinary one or something like that. Yeah, there are, all, there are unions of all sorts. There, you know, Office workers can be in unions. Uh, journalists can be in unions. That'd be cool. Um, they, they need a lot of protection, man. Yeah. Um, in reality, it is not, you know, a bunch of... You know, middle aged white sweaty men. Workers. Yeah. Okay. Um, My dream is if I can keep being tangential. Sure. Is I want like a comics union. There's been a thread kind of happening. Uh, not a thread. Multiple threads. Um, it started with um, the publishing paid me uh, hashtag on Twitter, and people were sharing their what they got for their advances and what not even just advances page rates um, for colorists and line work artists and all kinds of comics people, uh -huh. but also just books too, just publishing paid me. Some of those rates were bad guys. Oh my God. I saw shit like $20 a page and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like that's obscene. <laughs> that's like starvation wage. Basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. It takes, I mean, I work quickly again, but again, you're not paying me for just my time. Okay. But, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and it, and some of these were for super popular stuff. Um, so, listeners, if you've heard of the popular, super popular webcomic, check please by Ngozi Ozaku. Um, they got paid shit for their book, and like I saw that, and I'm like, I'm a first time fucking author, and I'm doing better than that. Like that's insane. Like that is an wow. insanely popular webcomic. Yeah, but is it just like based on who you get to be your agent, or like, yeah, how much they think they can just put over on you or so what's interesting is that this trend started to mostly show how poor black people were being paid in publishing particularly black women mm -hmm. um but it really just showed an extreme parity across the board just like wildly different rates um and this kind of continued into like page rates too and it was just like this is ridiculous <laughs> like, we should, this just should not be so different for 
different people. It also depends where you're located too. Like a lot of people in different countries were like, no, it's the U S market's way better than over here. Or something mm, like that. True. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, my, my big dream is to have a comic scene because like, damn, we need that. And then also there's a lot of harassment stories coming out in comics right now. Um, so like, yeah, I would fucking love that. Comics union. Get it together. Can we people. do that guys? Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, Hit me up. Let's see. Other stats. Uh, 12 of the 15 worst uh, gender pay gap states are right to work. Cool. Uh, the rate of workplace deaths is 49% higher. That's and right so to work much states. higher. Like, I could see someone brushing that off if it were like 5%. But like even 10% is way too too much. But 49? 49%. Yeah. yeah. That's so much um, higher. I think it's by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. One of those government agencies. Yeah. That's where that stat comes from. That's a lot. Yeah, forty nine percent. That's so much. Uh, you know, they're more likely to be if you're living in a right to work state, you're more likely to be under un, uninsured or underinsured, pay a higher portion of your premiums compared to, you know. Yeah, because they so would the union negotiate with the insurance company? Yeah. Well, oh, no, with be, your boss too. With your boss to be like, Hey, you better get them better benefits. Yeah. That would be great. Like I've heard like places that I've worked in, in the past have like frequently their insurance gets worse every year like yeah. it's definitely yeah. every time they have yeah, an insurance rates are going meeting up. with you it's to tell you how it got worse yeah for sure uh there's an average of 36 percent more discrimination charges received by the equal employment opportunity commission in okay. right to work states uh higher rates of poverty child poverty and infant mortality uh, and they spend 32.5 percent less per student on education so wait, hold on. So if you live in that state, uh, yeah, if you live okay. in a right to work state, I was like, wait, if you work at this place, I got confused. No, no, no. yeah, right to work states <laughs> you work are this generally company, worse. Basically, that sucks. That's yeah. very bad. This can happen to you if you are in any of these uh, any of these states. There are several of them: Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, Nebraska, Nevada. North Carolina, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Virginia, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. Damn. Those are the 27 right-to-work states. 27 is a lot. Yeah. Um, that's right-to-work. You're better at reading aloud than I am. I would have stumbled over this. <laughs> well, I have a, like a mealy mouth. A teacher skill. <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's how it is today. So how did we, we get here? Why did we do this? <laughs> yeah. How, Explain yourself, America. Why is this happening? Obviously, a lot of different factors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I think one w interesting way of looking at it, and, and sometimes an interesting way of learning about something, is looking at a particular person, mm -hmm. kind of emblematic of it, or who really, yeah, read me a bio. Really had a terrible hand in this. This is a guy, uh, another Texan. Oh God. By why the name, do we suck? I don't know. This guy was a real piece of shit. His name was Vance Muse. Vance Muse? Vance Muse. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like he random name generated his name. You know yeah, I mean? he sounds kind of like a fantasy elf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The GM didn't have something prepared. <laughs> yeah. He's like, his name is Vance, Vance, Vance Muse. <laughs> oh, the bard's name Vance Muse, huh? Good idea. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, before he gets involved in the labor union, he was already shitty. He was an oil industry lobbyist. Mm, yumma, yumma. He made his career fighting against... Women's suffrage. <laughs> wow, what a hill to die on. Uh, against child labor laws. <gasps> against racial integration. Wow. It and just against keeps going. the eight hour workday. No, he was a. Uh, he sucked. He, yeah. Piece of trash. Yeah, piece of shit for sure. Uh, he was also the editor of the magazine The Christian American. Okay. And he was a vicious racist and anti Semite. Even considering that this is a time when a lot of yeah. people were racist. So it wasn't just one bad take. It was He was bad all across the board. Yeah. <laughs> there's no redeeming no. information on him. No, there's not. <laughs> uh, he started getting involved in anti union activism in the late thirties, early forties. Okay. A time when union membership was really yeah. taken off. That um, was the time to be there. It's mainly because uh, that first law, the Wagner Act, the one that said, hey, you can have these four different types, um, that had just passed in, in 1935. And uh, the president, 
Franklin Roosevelt was going out there with, you know, telling everybody he liked unions. He was mm -hmm. pro-union. The union organizers, you know, people who were trying to start unions in workplaces would go out there and say, the president wants you to join a union. Aww. Um, and they were, you know. Could you imagine? That's wild. <laughs> yeah. Being told to join it, that would be crazy. Membership was exploding, you know, uh, fivefold compared yeah. to where it was in the, in the 20s. And Vance Muse, he was pissed. He hated this. He was like, what the fuck? Um, you know, why did he hate this happening? He saw unions as a threat to business interests, first yeah. of all. Because um, you're going to have to pay your workers more, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. As a threat to the, you know, racist social order of the Jim Crow South. God. Uh, he. Because, um, yeah, unions are probably, like, really integrated because you couldn't afford not to be, right? Some of them were, some of them weren't. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the bigger industrial unions, like the CIO, the Congress of Industrial Organizations, they were explicitly anti-segregation. You know, they okay, wanted yeah. to, they accepted members of all races, and they wanted to tear down the Jim Crow laws in the South. That's cool. Um, yeah, they were, it's a good they were awesome about that. They were also <laughs> rife with communists, which is great. You know, Hell that's yeah. why they were so cool. Um, Those are my bros. So, so Vance Muse was like, you know, fuck these guys. And he also saw them as a threat uh, because he was crazy and saw this all <laughs> as a conspiracy by what he called the Jewish Marxists. Ooh, what a was, turn. He thought it was a conspiracy to destroy Christian free enterprise and white supremacy. Well, hold on. One of those things should be destroyed, <laughs> at least. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was a he was a nut. He that's, was that's not so but so. He was wild. He Jesus has a phrase I enjoy. listeners. You can Google this. We're not going to put it out on our podcast, but you can Google some of what Vance Muse some of his quotes. They're terrible. Yeah, so, um, don't put those in your mouth. Yeah, um, they're bad. He was terrible, uh, and so he gets he starts getting involved in 1936 in the fight against unions. Okay, because he sucks. Okay, 1936. Let me see, let me see a picture of this fool. Uh, I do have a picture of it. I'm gonna... I like to put a face to the name. I'm a visual learner. Let's see. He just looks kind of sweaty. He looks smarmy to me. Yeah, a little smarmy. Yeah, white man. Yeah, I thought he would look more evil. Uh, in 1936, he founded a lobbying group called the Christian American Association. Okay. Okay. Um, for him, remember when he's saying the Christian American and everything, he's explicitly saying the not Jewish American. Yeah, that's rough. That's what he's trying to. He doesn't mean like, oh, we're just yeah. nice and religious. He yeah. specifically. It's more uh, of an ethnic thing. Yeah. Um, that's gross. He successfully, with this group, pushed so-called anti-violence bills. Um, starting in 1941, getting some states to pass this. What these laws did uh, was that they uh, held striking workers criminally liable for any violence that happened on a picket line. Even if it was if your boss who sent in goons to throw bricks at you, if anybody gets hurt, it's criminally, uh, it's, it's on the... What the heck? Yeah, like, it was it was explicitly anti-union in that way, you know, trying Jeez, to get... Jeez, that's bad. In the same year, he goes to our the friend we mentioned before, William Ruggles, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. our right to work friend. <laughs> he goes up there. Uh, he goes to Dallas to uh, kind of basically to get his blessing. To yeah. say, uh, you know, they talk, and he's like, "I want to go on this, you know, crusade for right to work nationwide, you know, yeah. and, and get this passed." And Ruggles says, "Do it." So he goes out there, and his organization. They're all fighting for to get rid of the open shop Jeez. and to get rid of unions as much as they can. So he goes out there, and it's not just him. Like, mm -hmm. It's not just Vance <laughs> Muse against the world. Yeah, and it's not just this organization. Like there are other organizations across the country. The, you know, the, the chamber of Co chambers of commerce across the you know, any business interests usually had some stake. Yeah, in advancing this, and so eventually they're successful in in getting fourteen states to pass right to work laws. Yeah. by 1947, which is when... It's pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, that, at that point, that's when Taft-Hartley comes into play and they actually legalize mm, okay. it. You know, they get rid of the open shop nationwide and they say, even though 14 states have already done it, they say, you guys can do right to work if you want. They, okay, they, let, they legalize it. They legalize it and let other states follow suit if okay. they want to. That's how we got there. <laughs> Sorry, who was Ruggles again? I got all Ruggles was the uh, newspaper guy. The editorial. Okay. Who said, what if we have right to work? Okay, we'll so he him. came up with it. Yeah, and yeah. then, um, what's his butt? Van, I almost called him Racist fucking man, J.D. Vance. Vance News. <laughs> That's a <laughs> different Vance. A different problematic. 
Yeah. Or sell it. Vance Muse mm-hmm. hung out with Ruggles and was like, can I take your idea and sell it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then Taft is just the name of the bill. The Taft Hartley bill. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was before that though, right? No, mm-hmm. that was after. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Time, I mean- timeline again. Uh, Muse starts doing anti-violence mm-hmm. bills. All right. Ruggles comes up with the his, term. His great fucking idea. <laughs> Vance takes the term and runs with it. Mm-hmm. By 1947, a lot of states have bought into right to work. Mm-hmm. And that's when Taft-Hartley, the law is passed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'm kind of going in. I'm a chronological uh, bitch. No, it, it definitely <laughs> makes sense. I was to... like poking dots on the kitchen table. Like, <laughs> this goes here, then this. I'm extremely visual. Yeah. So I think that the intent behind all this is pretty clear. Yeah. Right? This isn't to paint everybody who's anti-union as like vicious racist anti-Semite, you know? <laughs> that one guy for was, sure. for this, sure. Yeah. This guy, this w- that was what he was after, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but I think that even someone who is completely 100% just thinks unions should straight up be outlawed. Mm-hmm. They're probably I don't not. think I mean, that, maybe. you know, that doesn't necessarily mean they're, they're racist. Mm-hmm. But so I think the intent is clear not to look out for the worker and make sure they don't have to join a big mean union. <laughs> I think it's to make it harder for unions to operate so the businesses can make more profits. I'm also wondering... I, I have a feeling that, I mean, I don't know enough about unions in other countries to speak to this, but I feel like anti-union sentiment in America is probably pretty easy to do because there's such an individualistic culture here. And I also think we're really bad at thinking in long term. <laughs> so like if you tell just like somebody like, hey, you have to pay $400 right now, they're yeah. like, no. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a good point. Same same thing with like universal healthcare. I think that's one of the reasons we have such a big push of like I don't want to pay taxes. When it's like, no, you get something from it though. Mm-hmm. It's not just like you have to pay and then nothing good happens. Yeah, people just think I have to pay more taxes. Yeah, they don't it's think like, about their premiums not being there anymore. It's like an immediacy thing, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. and if it's behind your paycheck getting cut up by your boss to go to your insurance company or whatever, then they don't see it and they don't think about it. But if you try to sell them explicitly on like, yeah, you have to pay a tax, they're like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's that's a very good way to look at it. Another factor I think would be we don't have an actual labor party. You know, mm-hmm. we don't really have a political vehicle for labor unions. Yeah, both our parties hate this. <laughs> yeah, like Democrats <laughs> used, used to be to more be. pro-union, you know, and they nominally are now. But you don't have a party that's dedicated to, that's, you know, explicitly tied into the labor movement. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that that kind of helps it sure. be sidelined. You want to talk some, though, about uh, unions today mm-hmm. and employers have labor laws to kind of use against unions and say, well, this is ways that this is legally how it's harder for you to operate Yeah, in right to work states. But uh, employers also have, like you said, mentioned with your training, they also have a lot of other methods that they yeah, can, that they can use. Yeah, kind of soft tactics. What do you remember of that training? <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, the main, I mean, they just fucking drilled in, like, don't join our union. Like, they framed it very much as, like, this big, mysterious organization is going to take your money and then, like, lie to you, basically. Like, how do you know they're going to help you? Um, they just asked, like, but maybe they're lying is what they told you? <laughs> I don't remember. Honestly, I don't. This was, like, oh, gosh, I was a sophomore in college, so a while. Yeah, from what I remember, I don't remember much because it was a while back, but mm-hmm. it was more of a general... Again, I'm using the word connotation today. It's my word of the day. But it was a general feeling of like, yeah, this is a big faceless organization that's going to take your money and you might not see a return on it. Okay. Was it just, was this just part of the onboarding training or was this separate? I think it was separate. I think it was like everyone there had to come in and watch it. Did y'all have any talk of there maybe being a union organizing drive or something? Mm, I don't remember that. Yeah. Because sometimes that's a that's a common tactic is to like have you know a meeting and, yeah. and whatever and, and um, make people I would, watch that. Okay, another thing I have is I did watch American Factory on Netflix. That was really good. Is that the one by the Obamas or something? I didn't remember it was by the Obamas. Okay. It was about like a Chinese factory and a U.S. factory and like it was an auto plant and they like merged. Like the Chinese company took over and so like 
they were still trying to maintain their union oh. and they had like a bunch of Chinese immigrants come to work too. And I don't know, it was interesting. I don't Weird. know. I can't remember all the details again. <laughs> I'm great at remembering. Um, it was a really good movie though. Okay. Um, and, and they did a lot of those like mandatory meetings where they're like, here's why you don't want to be in a union. And, yeah. Yeah. And they had a term for it. There's a term for when they make you watch. The captive audience. That's it. Captive audience meetings. That's definitely one of the one of the tactics that they can use. In the film, do you remember if they were being nice to them most times, mean to them most times, kind of a mix in those meetings? Mm. Um, I don't remember. Um, I think they were pretty nice. I think they were trying to be like, no, we're looking out for you and that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. we've talked about this before, how companies definitely try to be like, we're a family here. <laughs> it's like, you're not, though. Oh, you're a family. You're not my real dad. Um, yeah. Uh, no, they can they can kind of take the nice guy approach. They can do scare tactic approach. That's pretty common. I think they started doing that when people started like striking and stuff, and they're mm -hmm. like someone came into the factory to like hold up a sign that says like join the union or whatever, and they like kicked them out the property and were like very, very pissed. Brusque is that how you say that word? Brusque. Brusque. <laughs> yeah, captive audience meetings. Mm-hmm. Super annoying, super terrible. They're mandatory meetings, right? And they teach you how bad the unions are or how good the company's is or is going to, it promises to be, you uh, know? They're like that uh, bad boyfriend. Yeah, they like Maybe to, it'll be different this time. They, uh, they use scare tactics. It's not an open forum. You know, they don't, they're not interested in hearing a pro-union side of the story at this meeting. Um, and it's during work hours. Like, yeah. It's, you know, in a lot of jobs, they're still going to hold you accountable while your work's piling up and you're in this dumb meeting, you know? <laughs> I was looking up some examples of of what employers do at meetings like this and, you know, some of their tactics. Um, sometimes they'll distribute documents or news clippings supposedly showing, you know, uh, that your union is just, you know, just trying to take your money. They might also pass out uh, phony checks, actually, with, like, the union dues taken out to oh show you what God. it'll look like. Look at how much money you're going to be losing. It's just so short-sighted, again. Like, yeah. you're not losing it. You're paying for something. Right. Uh, they'll bring in a bag of groceries with the label, what you could buy with one year's union dues. <laughs> It's just like, come on, man. You mentioned the PS4, which I thought was Yeah, funny. it's that was a that was a part of an anti union campaign by I think it was Delta that did that. That's hilarious. Uh captive audience meetings are super stupid, <laughs> but definitely a method that employers use. Uh they don't just come up with the stuff on their own. There are There are companies for this, right? There are horrible companies for oh this gosh. set up. I think they were in that documentary too. Union We should watch that. We should, yeah. That should be on our that should be on our movie film list. Film it. club. But yeah, these groups are called uh, union avoidance consultants. You know, help okay. you avoid unions. Wow, they're expensive Explicit. ass law firms, you know, or companies or whatever. And their job is to teach the company how to either prevent a union from forming from forming if like it's an imminent threat, like mm -hmm. you know, it's about to happen. Or just to, you know, give them best practices of how to prevent it in the future. I don't know how these people, you know, sleep at night <laughs> doing this job. But um, here's some tactics. Probably with a lot of money. Well, yeah, now, that probably If you're helps. a consultant, you can charge whatever the fuck you want, man. Like, that's such a inflated job title. Um, so some of this stuff starts before you're even in the door. Mm -hmm. Which is illegal. <laughs> But it's done it's in... It's never stopped anyone before. Yeah. Uh, it's done in subtle ways. One uh, of these firms that I saw on, on their website, they bragged about uh, having a 96% you know, union-busting success rate. Uh, and they said, unions often try to plant their members into a company's workforce to assist with union organizing efforts. We have developed an applicant screening process. That cannot be legal. So I looked into this to figure out what are they talking about? Yeah. Because it, you're right that it is illegal to just like say, hey, are, are you in a union or yeah. what do you think about unions yeah. or anything like that? You can't ask that. In an right. Interview. Because yeah. then it's by, you know, you could hire or fire based on that decision. So you can't ask that. 
But have you ever taken like a personality assessment quiz? Yeah, or... a BuzzFeed quiz. No, 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 not like, a, well, like for your work though. Like oh. before you start, how they have yes. like the let's say you're in this situation. What oh would you no, do? I hate those quizzes. You have to act like a total fucking nerd. You have to act like a total fucking nerd, and, and the reason for that is so that they can weed out people who would be like, no, I think that my life, you know, my family is more important. Mm-hmm. Than, than staying late for work or I think yeah, that like, like a human being would right you have to answer it like you're a work robot yeah. like you're a pro company oh, stooge gross, gross gross that's run by these companies that's part of the union avoidance scheme is to make sure that you get people who are at least willing to say you know oh. because at least they're willing yeah, to change true. their behavior somewhat they're willing to go with yeah who either actually company. believe that or scared enough to say they believe it Yes. Oh, that's so messed up. You don't want someone who's so loud and outspoken that they will, on the mm-hmm. survey, say, no, fuck yeah, you. Yeah, no. I'm my own person. I always hated those quizzes so much. They're the worst. Oh, they're so bad. They made me feel like such a liar. Yeah. Like, I don't think it should be controversial to be like, my, my job is just a paycheck. Right, yeah. But everyone wants you to have a, you know, oh, I've had a passion for yeah. filling out spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And like, I don't know, I, I'm also an artist and like, I still... That's different, but mm-hmm. even then, like, that's not my primary income. Like, primary income is like, that is just, that's how I make money. Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry. If any coworkers find this, sorry. Yeah, for sure. Like, they, you know, like you mentioned, they have onboarding, you know, training. A lot of times that's just folded in. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's not like a separate captive audience meeting. It's just like, right, when you come in, watch out for unions. Some people might be bad. Don't yeah. listen to them. Um, I might have been part of initial training, too, when I worked retail. I think I remember a module on that. Yeah. I worked retail way back in the day in, like, high school, and I think that was part <laughs> of it as well. But if something crops up and people start talking about wanting to, to do union things and, mm-hmm. and maybe start a union, all of a sudden, one tactic they might use all of a sudden is, oh, well, hey, you know, what can we do for you? Like, how can we, you know, how can we help you out? Uh, they all of a sudden start being, you know, taking Here. an interest, being nicer, Trying to help, trying to fix, you know, the vending machine's been broken for six months, but now it's fixed, you know. Oh, this is such a, this is definitely a toxic relationship. It's like a toxic bad boyfriend, abusive. Yeah. Talking about, we mentioned this already, talking about being a family, not wanting, you know, to add extra rules mm-hmm. or bring in a third party or something. Mm-hmm. They don't, you know, they don't. Why would you want to complicate things that way? Obviously, this the rare. counter to that is... Well, dude, the reason I want to bring in more rules is because you guys are fucking us over. Yeah. You know, like, why do you think we Why do you think we want to bring somebody in? It's not just because things are great here. Yeah, because, that's not why you know, that happens. A lot of times employers will ask you to take a wait and see approach. Like once they put on the charm offensive and say, oh, come on, look, you know, we, we did this, we did this, we did this. Surely things are better. Why don't you give us, you know, see how this turns out and see if you still want your union, still want to bring in someone from the outside, Yeah. you know, later, you know, tell you basically to, to, to wait and see. They can also get losers to start a uh, vote no campaign. Oh, God. They can get a turncoat uh, to, to help them with that. And a lot of times they will illegally like promise these guys, you know, promotions or pay raises or just straight up bribes. That's to not be involved good. With this. Companies are barred from funding like anti-union materials for any sort of campaign like this. But they, they do, it, do anyway. it in other ways. They have to make it look like homemade and stuff and not like Yeah, like, oh, you did a great job last week, Derek. You're promoted right after you finish that campaign. Well, but let's say that yeah, they have to do that. But they also, like, let's say Derek is passing out leaflets about how unions are bad. A mm-hmm. lot of times he's gotten them from the company. Yeah. And the company makes it look, like, not great. So maybe Derek actually did put this together. Like, they can't put, like, a sleek, oh, like, printing yeah, yeah. company So they job. have to be like, Derek totally printed these out at home. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, even if he's got, like, you know, 100,000 of them. Yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> um, There's no way Derek has enough ink. Yeah. So, you know, Sorry, someone's Derek. always... Maybe your workplace is lucky enough not to have this listener, but there are a lot of people out there that's you know that are willing to sell their souls like this. So does this fall under like HR? Are they usually the guys doing that? Um, HR, yeah, HR would play a big role in coordinating this, I think, or just management in general. Yeah, because that's that's another thing. Again, this is more about like discrimination and harassment, but like. I feel like the common refrain is like, just go to HR. And it's like, HR also works for the company. <laughs> yeah, <their laughs> like, job they're not going to help you for everything. Their job is not really to stick up for you so much as make sure that you're not going to cause a problem for the company. Yeah, for sure. Because that's who pays them. 
speaking of using like HR and stuff, they'll use supervisors mm-hmm. uh, to put the one-on-one pressure to people. Oh, God, I hate that. Uh, scheduling, you know, little one-on-one meetings with people, and they can't be like you know too prying in terms, but they can still. What do you, you know, think? They like can, that kind of stuff? Or well, what? no, they would more like present like, well, you know, I've heard about this union talk. It's worrying to me, you know, like I think that we all, you know, work great here. And, you know, they can oh, give yeah. kind of the positive spin and and say, well, I don't you know, I don't know if the union, you know, comes in. Things could look a whole lot different and a whole lot worse here and stuff. You know, they can do that if they fail to, like, prevent there being a union election. Mm hmm. Uh, then they can even still, a lot of them try to pull like a last minute thing the day of or the day before the union election. Uh, sometimes they'll, they'll fire somebody or they'll, uh, they'll force some higher up guy to resign. You know, someone who basically takes the fall and then, you know, bring somebody in and they say, oh, you know, we got rid of our director of personnel or whatever. We mm-hmm. understand that, you know, friction was caused and stuff. Oh, and so stuff. They, they get a fall guy. Yeah, and they basically Skate say, like, please, you know, give the new regime a chance. You know, things will be oh, good. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. That's bad, but bad, bad. Hopefully we don't still have the need for, you know, some mm-hmm. outside force. Yeah. Coming in. Uh, that's when, and, like, one guy resigns at a shitty corporation for, like, harassment or something. You're like, well, it's still a very bad culture. It's not just, it's all, it's not usually just one dude. Yeah, or when, like, banks have mm-hmm. some big, like, oh, they were making fake accounts for all these customers, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, that was three guys, I guess. I you guess know? three guys put in all that time to do that. <laughs> um, I saw this I, I saw this on a union site that was talking about, you know, hey, what can you expect if you're trying to unionize? Like, what might your employer try to pull off? And mm-hmm. they were like, unbelievably, some employers go as far as to park empty moving vans near the job site just before the election. To give the workers the idea that the company will leave if the union goes through. Oh my god, can they do that? Uh, First of all, it's illegal to (laughs) just close, like, to just close the place. To close after a union? To avoid, yeah, to avoid having a union. Okay. But also it doesn't make sense if you think about it. A company is actually going to start making zero profit if they just shut down. Yeah, yeah. Versus just, like, paying their workers more. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, that's apparently one tactic that they use. They're... This is another basic ass union question. Sure. So I I feel like if you go up to someone and say, hey, this union's going to make sure that you get paid more, that person might respond with, well, wouldn't they have to fire people to make up for that? And a union would prevent that, correct? Or put, try to? Yeah, they would, they would prevent that, I think, because they put the contract in place on the workers that are there and okay. any new workers that come in. Like a, a an employer can't fire somebody like as a result of of wage increases. I, yeah, I mean they can like not hire more people or something. Yeah, they they'll always try increase. to find a find some way to keep. And it's not going to be from their paycheck, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, no, there may be instances of that happening sometimes. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, but I think people rely on that too much when they should be looking to how high on the hog the boss is living. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know? There's enough to go around. It's there just is. not going to you. There <laughs> fucking is. Ugh. So yeah, those are some of the tactics. You might be wondering, like, hey, this sounds ridiculous. This mm-hmm. must happen in you know in mm-hmm. exceedingly rare me. cases. Give me the juice. But um, but this happens a lot. Like we said, you know, these these companies are out there coaching them on how to how to do. Yeah, this. there's it's so prevalent. There's an entire industry to supporting it. So yeah, it's so gross too. <laughs> this one, um, I'm not gonna name him because I don't want to get sued by him. But, uh, <laughs> Their thing here says, our services, your union-free future, the power of better thinking. Ew. I can, like, picture that website and it's ugly. When employees begin to organize, it strikes fear into the heart of any organization. The good news, you have a powerful union avoidance team of experienced labor relations consultants in your corner. Oh, good. And they have testimonials from bullshit companies who hired this garbage company. Uh, another one that I saw that was interesting, this is the same place. They offer trainings and seminars. So for the low, low price of nearly $4,000, uh, you too can be a union buster. Yeah, I was kind of curious about that. Is it, if I'm sure it's a mix of this, these consultants actually coming in and giving those talks and whatever, and them training, like, let's say, the HR department to do this. Right, yeah. It, they welcome all corporate decision makers, HR Oof. professionals, and managers with employee relations responsibility. The term corporate decision makers makes me want to hurl. Yeah, that's like stakeholders. Oof. You know, something stupid like that. Stakeholders. Anyway, garbage. Uh, anyway, if you feel garbage like humans. If you feel like you're too good of a person and you have $4,000 to burn, you can go... 
become yeah. way worse. By... You already had a vision you're getting into heaven. You want to make it a little more challenging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just I, I want to go play on hard mode. Go learn how to screw over your fellow people. <laughs> but how often does this happen? I want yeah. to tangent there. How often does this happen? Uh, this is um, from a study by the Economic Policy Institute. They're basically kind of a liberal think tank. Okay. Um, yeah, I've maybe a little on left. NPR. They show uh, up on Marketplace now and then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they say that em- employers were charged with violating federal laws with at least one unfair labor practice in forty-one point five percent of union elections in twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen. That's a lot. Nearly half. Yeah. And that's the only ones they caught. That's the ones they <laughs> that they caught and were charged with. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They apparently illegally fired workers in one third of those elections. That's so many. They illegally coerced, threatened, disciplined, or retaliated against union supporting workers in a third of those elections. Yeah, like your boss can't just be like, here's extra work. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you have to clean the toilets today. <laughs> You're you know? on toilet too. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, they can't. Yeah. No, they can't. Or like, you had the window seat and they're like, uh, your new office is over here in, in the, the broom closet. Yeah. Like, You're in the boiler room. Um, <laughs> that would suck. They can't do that, but they might illegally do that. You know, there's yeah. this retaliation. Uh, they also spent more than $340 million a year on union avoidance advisors like those great, you know, those great companies sending their guys. HR to these, uh, to these trainings and seminars. Gosh. I think what makes me super mad about that is, again, I already mentioned, like, these are just people that were charged with it. Like, it's probably, they probably have so many fucking excuses of like, oh no, this was, we just had to move their office to a shithole. You know, like, I bet there's a lot of, they spend a lot of time and money proving that they aren't doing this for those reasons. Or firing. Or firing. Yeah. They can totally be like, no, like, they can drum up fake shit against you. Right. Yeah. If you're at will employment, which just means you don't have a contract there that says that these are the only terms that you can fire them by, which is something a union helps you with, right? Mm -hmm. If you're just at will employed, they can say, well, we didn't want them. Their performance wasn't great. But they don't have to give a reason. They can just say, no, we fired them. Didn't fire them for union things. We just We we just did it. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll cover this more in our um, discrimination episode. Yeah. Workplace discrimination. For sure. But that kind of wraps up some of the main things about uh, right to work laws, about other means that employers have uh, in terms of fighting against unions. As you can tell, they have a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They're very into it. Yeah. They suck. (laughs) They suck. (laughs) All right. Let's move to our next segment. We're not doing an organization corner today. We're going to change things up. Mm -hmm. We're doing a pop quiz. Pop quiz. I mean, technically it's not a pop quiz because we told each other we were doing it, but we didn't study. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a prepared quiz. Just a slacker quiz. A slacker quiz. That's a good, yeah. All right. So uh, we each have three questions. For... I have a question about the questions. Okay. Do we want to alternate or do one quiz at a time? Let's alternate. Okay. I think that's a good. I think that'll be fun. So I'm going to ask Christine questions about communism and socialism that we have Talked about on the show. Mm-hmm. Academic content. And I'm going to ask Grady just about random pop, pop culture shit. Um, just, it's basically just my interests. <laughs> I'm basically testing to see how much he pays attention to me when I just black babble about shit I'm into. Uh, yeah, so this should be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Keep in mind, I've been staying here for like four days, so this is a good test. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Do you want to start or do you want me to start? You should start. All right. First question. What congressional organization was charged with investigating subversives and disloyal citizens such as suspected communists? Another one? 1938 to 1975. The House Un-American Committee. Activities Committee. Yeah. House Un-American Activities Committee. Hell yeah. Good job. Thank you. All right. (laughs) I think I ordered them in difficulty, but I also don't know what you know. Um, your first question. What is a himbo? Oh my gosh, you don't know. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds vaguely familiar. But what is it? Himbo. Can I get a category hint or? Think about it etymologically. Etymologically. Himbo. Sounds like a piece of clothing. It's not. It's really not. Oh, man. So it comes from the combination of the word him and bimbo. So, oh. <laughs> But specifically, it refers to a very 
Um, usually hunky, but it can just be a handsome man. And right. they're also, they're dummy thick is what oh, it is. Oh, it's, it's a term for someone mm-hmm. who is dummy thick. Yeah. But so there's actually been some discourse about himbos lately, um, saying that they can be emotionally intelligent, which is why they're valued. Or just by being a person. Or just by being a person. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be smart to be. <laughs> You don't have to have any redeeming qualities to be a good person. But, um, um, so yeah, that's what a himbo is. It was also on the crossword like a few weeks ago. My father-in-law was like, that's not a word. I'm like, oh, it is. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. So one zero Christine so far. Gosh, I thought you would get that one. You knew dummy thick, so I thought. Yeah, I know that. I didn't know himbo. Now I know. Now you know. All right. Here's your next question. <laughs> Uh, it's a three-parter because I'm a teacher and I'm mean. God damn it. Uh, what political... Let me essay. I don't have my blue book. <laughs> uh, what political group took power from the provisional government in Russia in the October Revolution? That's the first part of the question. Oh, God. Okay. There's more. What year did this happen and who was their leader? Okay. I have a guess. Okay. I mean, I want to say Bolsheviks. Okay. And it was 19... 19- 17. Okay. And I think it was Lenin. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah! You got it right. I was like, I definitely got at least one of those wrong. <laughs> it's the Bolsheviks. The Russian Revolution was in 1917. Hell and their yeah. leader was Vladimir Lenin. Hell yeah. Crushing it. All right. Time for me to <laughs> try another question. All right. Question. All right. Name at least six astrological signs. Oh. Bonus points if you can name all 12. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right, Gemini. All right. Aries. There you go. You name me and you. Yeah. <laughs> I've been reading his horoscope Cancer. to him every day. <laughs> Cancer. Cancer. Yeah. Uh, that's Dad. Scorpio. Yeah, that's Sarah. Uh, Libra. There you go. Uh, Mom is no. Mom's either a Libra or a Virgo. Virgo. <laughs> damn it! <laughs> damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> that's cheating. Now you have to name one more. God. All right. Um. Mm. Pisces. There you go. Yeah. You want to go for all 12? Sagittarius. Capricorn. <laughs> oh, um, Leo. Mm-hmm. I don't think I know the last two. Taurus. And I actually can't remember the last one right now. Probably because... Oh, Aquarius. Aquarius. Because Aquarius. Yeah. Nice. I. You got way more than yeah, I thought I you would. I gave part. you a freebie, though. True. Yeah, I stole that one. I said it as soon as... Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My turn again. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. I also have a list. <laughs> um, and mine is list and define... Oh, man. You have one, too. Don't worry. Three types of leftism. Okay. For a bonus point, you can list four of them. Okay. You know? One um, bonus. Okay. I'm going to start with my favorite, which is anarcho-communism. All right. And that's when you skip the step of having the state control, um, like, stuff. Oh, oh, God. You skip the step of having the state be controlled by the workers, and you just go to everything's run by workers, and it's very localized. Is that a good enough definition? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. (laughs) Did I fill the space? Do I need to write extra large? Communal control, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, communism. Just do communism. Just do communism. For real. Locally, no bosses, no state. Yeah, good. Okay, good. Wonderful. Anarcho-communist. That's one. Um, Next, I'm going to do sock dems, which are just kind of like reformists. They would like some more programs in there if they can. Um, Like maybe some Medicare for all, but maybe not. Is that good enough? <laughs> I'm just gonna keep doing the bare minimum and asking if that's good enough. I mean, yeah, they they want they want programs, but they want they want, they want ca- it's like capitalism life. They still are under capitalism. Yes. Okay. That's cool. what you're I was seeing. For. I was seeing if you would get. I the could see in your face. You know, I was like, more. I want it. Yeah. Basically, you're right. Basically, keep capitalism, but make it as nice as you can. Mm-hmm. It's like the furthest left most you can be of capitalists. Yeah. Um, do the pro I mean I think all of them want to do all the programs you know Medicare for all Green New Deal they want to do that Mm -hmm. they just want to keep you know capitalism as an underpinning in its place yeah okay good All right. you got two I got two Um, I'm gonna go for a curveball here and say Maoism okay um, which uses um, peasants are the main 
people instead of workers, I guess, or the, I don't remember what you would call the proletariat, I guess. And they use something, I don't remember the name of it, but it's like basically surveys where they would ask people, what do you like? What do you not like? Well, how can we improve? And um, they also had the cultural revolution, which was like basically like really killing people if they didn't, if they were kind of like counter-revolutionary, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Basically, stay on your toes. The bourgeoisie can pop around any mm -hmm. corner. You know, you want even people you think are good might end up being bourgeoisie someday. So, okay. yeah, uh, surveys was, was that's called the mass line. Mass line, okay. That's where you say, "Hey, what do you guys want to do?" Then be like, "Okay, how can we put this in our revolutionary ideology?" And then come back and be like, "Guys, we're going to do the thing. Come on," you know. Whenever I forget what a term is, I think back to my AP Spanish exam where there's like a listening portion mm -hmm. and they said this whole fucking like paragraph about, um, oh gosh, what was the word? I forgot the word now. I gotta look it up. Cause it's was... aceite. Aceite. And I didn't know what it was. And so I just had to bullshit. Like <laughs> it's round. Like I knew some <laughs> of the words around it, but I didn't know it's, it's olives. Yeah. Oh, uh, acetuna. Acetuna. Oh wait, right. no, acetuna's. I thought aceituna was... Or is aceite... Oh, oil, oil, isn't it? Aceite Oh, that, that must have been part of the description. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, yeah. Jeez. It that could be Spanish. made of olives or what? Or, yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked. I felt so stupid. Dude, nice. Okay, so you got Okay, I got three. Do you want to go for the bonus four? I do. do I do. Okay. okay, I think I'm going to go for... I mean, I can just go for OG Marxism. That's kind of lazy, but I'll do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not above it. Um, That's the one that was like on the test review, you know, like, you know <laughs> yeah. that one for sure. That was on the practice test. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the idea that capitalism has been developed over multiple generations and it went through this big cycle of extracting resources and shit. And now we are going to get to a point where um, enough workers realize that their boss is screwing them over and they should like band together and have worker-led workplaces and worker-led states and eventually that falls away and then we have the state yeah the state falls away and one day we have fucking star trek shit yeah <laughs> fully automated luxury gay space communism yes all right yeah cool bonus points Killed included it. four Killed for it. four there on the most challenging of the questions thank you time for mine all right you have a definition one too Ooh. You have to define the following terms. Do you want me to list them first or just, just do one at a time? See if you can define it. List them first so I can pick and choose. Okay. I'll probably ask you for them again. All right. Kerning. Okay. Tracking. Okay. Letter spacing. Okay. And letting. Ah, okay. Kerning is the space between letters in a word. Like, make sure that the letters don't have too much of a gap. Like, you're, you know massage therapist sign doesn't say massage the rapist mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um kerning okay next one was um tracking tracking next one was <laughs> letter spacing the letter spacing sounds like kerning what letters oh shit i messed up those that's actually those are two the same so i'll go ahead and give you that those Ooh. two are the same so you just letter have to find three yeah. sorry it's Another been a while since i've taken a typography class <laughs> All right, uh, tracking and what's it? Tracking last? slash letter spacing, and then the last one is letting. Letting, okay. Huh. You don't remember letting? I taught you this. I know, but I don't remember. <laughs> All right, letting and what's the other one? Tracking, tracking slash letter spacing, whatever you right. want to call it. From my understanding, tracking is a little more print-based and letter spacing is a little more web-based, but you don't care about that. I'm going to claim that that one is like spacing between words like kerning is like within a word and then tracking is like so that's actually word spacing which is a different one oh. <laughs> um so tracking this one's tricky it's it is kind of like kerning but kerning is an individual change you make within the word like oh the c is a little too and then far away tracking and is it's like just a general, general. like Whoa. i want everything spaced by you know two points so yeah that's huge by the way don't do that <laughs> <laughs> Generally, I don't know. It depends. Okay, it all changes right. a lot. And the last one's letting. The last one's letting. Letting is how much space vertically between lines. Yes, it is. Ooh. 
Do you remember? All right. It? Two out of three. Two out of three. It's pretty good. Yeah. Get partial. Cre- Do we have partial credit on this question? Yes. Yeah. All I'm right. Nice. nice. That was that was hard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a. And when it comes to questions like that, I guess I'm a little bit of a himbo. Oh, good job, though. You picked that up. <laughs> oh, All right. Great. Nice. Did we finish? I mean, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I want to um, <laughs> What do you want to learn about next time when we... That's a good cue. All right. Yeah, I'm excited because next time we're going to do a listener Q&A episode. Uh, um, yeah. So our beautiful, perfect listeners have sent us questions on our Gmail, um, and we have enough of them now to do a full episode on them. Yeah, and if we, you know, if we continue to get more of them, uh, we can do, this, you know, we can do multiple. Yeah, every once in a while. We'll do I one. would love that. That would be great. I would also be cool with having that like as a segment too at the end. If there's kind of a shorter one we want to throw in. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, keep sending questions. That's teach me communism at gmail.com. So yeah, send us in those questions. We'll keep adding them to the list and mm-hmm. keep covering them. So if we plan to cover a hundred percent of, you at know, some point, yeah. we'll get to them. So <laughs> follow us on Instagram at teach me communism. Uh, Twitter is at teach communism. Um, I already mentioned the Gmail, but just again, in case, in case you, your earbuds fell out. Uh, teach me communism at gmail.com and we are also on youtube now um if you're i don't know gen zer and you only use youtube um i don't know if that's accurate i'm i'm now old but we're on there um and you can listen to us on there if that's your preferred device yeah, yeah. okay uh as usual you're a great student oh thanks um even i'm chuffed when you're up in the front row i know i was worried this was gonna be hard but i think the fact that i lived with you for like 18 years helps like yeah being in person somewhat <laughs> uh, i would not be this chill with a real teacher <laughs> <laughs> all right um so yeah thanks for being a great student and listeners you can catch us next week on another episode of teach me communism where the class struggle is always in session hell yeah Bye. Bye Bye-bye.